Good afternoon, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on security controls for account management. Today we're going to begin by discussing managing groups and user accounts, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on account policy enforcement concepts. With that, let's go ahead and begin this session. We will begin with a discussion on managing groups and user accounts. The problem with individualized user account privileges is that they quickly become difficult to manage and control. The complexity of this type of network account management just about guarantees that mistakes will happen and security will be compromised. While within smaller organization and networks, it may be possible to create custom privileges for individual accounts, it is not a network security best practice. The network security best practice is to create individual user accounts and then to assign the users to groups that have privileges within the network. Group privileges are easier to track and control. Additionally, managing account authorization via groups is less prone to error. Creating multiple accounts for individual users is not a best practice. As a matter of fact, it is a best practice to avoid creating multiple user accounts for an individual user. Each user should be assigned to a single user account. This is for security and accountability reasons. Although this should rarely be done, an exception can be made when systems or network administrators are also responsible for performing non-administrative network tasks. In that situation, they should not be using their administrative account. Shared accounts. As a best practice, this should never be done. Each user should have his or her own account, which is never shared. If the account is shared, accountability is lost. Then there are user assigned privileges. The best practice is to not assign individuals any privileges. If a user has complex job duties that don't fall within a single group's privileges, the user can be assigned two additional groups to gain those privileges. But don't just add the privileges to the individual user account. Group assigned privileges are the best practice. The best practice is to create group privileges based on the principle of least privilege. That is the minimum level of access that is required in order to get the job done. Specialized privileges can be assigned to groups and the personnel who require those privileges can be assigned to the groups. Continuous monitoring is another account management best practice. User access reviews should be performed on a regular basis. These review the level of access that users have to the system to help ensure that the levels are correct. Account auditing should also be done. Implement auditing on groups and accounts to track employee actions within the system. Audit logs then need to be reviewed on a regular basis to help ensure that security is being maintained. Now let's move on to some account policy enforcement concepts. The first one is group policies. These should be used to deploy and distribute all security settings on all servers and clients on the network. As a best practice, groups should be established under the principle of least privilege. Then there is credentials management. A central credentials management tool and policy tool should be used to manage account credentials. This includes how frequently passwords must be changed. Then there are disablement policies. All unused or unnecessary accounts should be disabled. Accounts of employees on leave or vacation should also be disabled. Then there are generic accounts. Shared or generic accounts should be prohibited. These type of accounts increase the difficulty of auditing user actions on the network and represent a potential security threat. And finally, password policies. There are several password policies that should be in place, and the first one is length. A minimum length should be set. Longer passwords are more complex than shorter ones and harder to crack. Eight characters is a common minimum length. 
then there's complexity. Requiring complex passwords, as in requiring a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols, leads to an increase in account security as the complexity is greatly increased. Then there's expiration. All passwords should be set to expire after a set amount of time. The longer a single password is in use, the more likely it is to be cracked, which brings us to a reuse policy. Determine how and when users may reuse the same password. A reuse policy is used in conjunction with a password history policy. The history policy tracks the password history of users to prevent them from reusing the same password outside of the reuse policy. There should be a lockout policy in place. This will establish a set number of times that a user can attempt to log in before the user account is locked out and will then require an administrator to undo the lockout. Lockout policies help to prevent hackers from using a brute force type attack. And finally, there are recovery policies. A process needs to be put in place to recover lost or forgotten passwords and to recover deleted user accounts. That concludes this session on security controls for account management. We began by talking about managing group and user accounts, and we concluded with a very brief discussion on some account policy enforcement concepts. On behalf of Peace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.